Craig Wilson, and I'm the Curator of History for Mackinac State Historic Parks. Today I'd like to take a look at a historic image that's part of our archival collections. This picture actually comes out of a photo album that belonged to an American infantry officer named Edward Pratt. He served in the American Army for about 30 years at the end of the 19th century, including six years at Fort Mackinac. He was there with the 23rd Infantry from 1884 to 1890. The album actually includes quite a few Mackinac-related images. This is actually the first one that appears in the album, and it is titled Companies E and K, Fort Mackinac, Michigan, 1886. Now that's kind of exactly what you see here. Companies E and K of the 23rd Regiment were assigned to the fort uh, at that time. Pratt himself served with Company K. Uh, and we see a good portion of the garrison drawn up on the parade ground here. Beyond that, the fort itself probably looks pretty similar to the fort that you've seen if you've been to visit our restored museum over on the island. You can see the soldiers' barracks there front and center, and then off to the right you also see the quartermaster storehouse kind of looming in the distance. You also have the east blockhouse. Now, as I mentioned, you do see probably both Company E and Company K in this photo, but it's probably not all of the soldiers. Uh, at this point in time in the 1880s, if both companies were at full strength, there should have been just around 100 soldiers at Fort Mackinac, and there don't appear to be quite that many men in this image. Uh, and in fact, you can actually see up on the second floor porch of the barracks, there's another soldier who's just kind of leaning over and watching things. So again, probably not the entire garrison, but this does represent a pretty good portion of the men assigned to Fort Mackinac in the 1880s. Regardless of whether or not this represents the entire strength of the garrison, the soldiers in this photo are drawn up very much by the book. They are drawn up exactly the way a drill manual would have told them to be. You see the two officers out in front of the line of enlisted men. Those officers are denoted by the wide white stripes on their trouser legs. They also have shoulder straps uh, on their uniform blouses, and they're also both carrying swords. The officer closest to the camera may actually be Pratt himself. Uh, it's kind of unclear with the image quality, but Pratt did wear a mustache for most of his life, uh, and this officer does bear at least a passing resemblance to him, uh, but again, it's unfortunately unclear whether or not it is actually him. Moving back behind the officers, we see the entire line of enlisted soldiers, uh, and we can see that the two company first sergeants are exactly where they are supposed to be posted, again, per the drill manual. The first sergeant is the senior non-commissioned officer in the company. His uniform is denoted by, again, a wide white stripe on his trouser legs, not quite as wide as the ones that the officers wear, uh, and also a triple chevron under a diamond on the sleeve of his blouse. So we can see one of the company first sergeants very clearly, very much front and center. Fortunately, his rifle is blocking his trouser stripe. And then if you look down the row of men kind of in the middle, you can sort of make out another first sergeant insignia. Behind that primary rank of men, there are other non-commissioned officers, again, exactly where they are supposed to be acting as file closers behind the line. So you see another sergeant behind the first sergeant, just kind of in front of the steps of the barracks porch. Something else that you'll notice about the rest of the enlisted men is that they are arranged by height, and this is very much by the book. When the company or companies would form up, they would actually be sized. So the first sergeant or another non-commissioned officer would have the men fall in in a single file line and then essentially have them sort themselves out by height. So the tallest soldier went first and the shortest soldier went last. That way, when they were all formed up shoulder to shoulder like this, there would be a nice even silhouette. You wouldn't have the tallest soldier right next to the shortest man in the company, so it made everything look just a little bit more uniform. Now, all of the soldiers in this image, both the officers and the enlisted men, are wearing their normal everyday uniform, their undress uniform. That consists of the forage cap that you see all of the men wearing, as well as the pretty plain undress blouse. It's just a five-button coat. 
They have sort of dressed things up, however, because they do all appear to be wearing their white Berlin gloves. Those are usually reserved for use with the dress uniform, so if they were getting dressed up for some sort of special occasion. Uh, but we do see in other images that occasionally they do mix and match, as they've done here. Getting back to the buildings, they do offer a few interesting clues about when this picture may have been taken. Remember, the caption on this image in the album identifies it as being from 1886. But as you look at the Quartermaster Storehouse, and especially the barracks, you can maybe start to see that there appears to be some color on the walls and on the window frames. Now, it's always a little difficult to try and identify colors in historic images like this that are black and white or sepia-toned. But if you compare the color of the window sashes on the barracks, which very much appear to be white, with the window frame surrounding them, and then with the siding on the building around that, we should be able to identify at least three different colors. You've got white on the window sashes, a darker color on the window frames, and then a lighter color on the siding. That does appear to be the color scheme that was adopted in 1888. And again, if you've been to Fort Mackinac today, you've seen this color scheme recreated, where most of the buildings surrounding the parade ground are painted a light tan, and then the trim around the windows and doors are a darker brown. Again, that color scheme was adopted in 1888 at the urging of the commanding officer, Captain Greenleaf Goodale. He was a little concerned about the men because if they were standing out on the parade ground, as the men in this photo are doing, it would be very bright. You'll notice that the parade ground itself is not a nice grassy field like it is right now. Instead, it is white crushed gravel. And going all the way back to 1780 when Fort Mackinac was first constructed by British soldiers, most of the fort's buildings had been whitewashed. Everything had been white for about a century by the time this photo was taken. But in 1888, Captain Goodale, who was pretty concerned about the welfare of the soldiers, decided that that was just too bright, and so he ordered most of the buildings surrounding the parade ground painted in this new brown color scheme in an effort to cut down on eye strain. So why is there a discrepancy between what we can probably guess to be the color scheme depicted on the buildings and the handwritten caption in the album? You know, that 1888 versus 1886 discrepancy? It's unclear. Uh, the album may have been assembled at a later date. It may not actually have been put together while Pratt was at Fort Mackinac. He may not have put it together. It may have been his wife or his daughter or perhaps someone else and they may have just misremembered the date when this particular photo was taken. In any case, it is definitely taken in the 1880s. It does definitely depict the 23rd Infantry at Fort Mackinac, and even if that handwritten caption isn't entirely correct, this image does give us a really interesting look at what the fort would have looked like when it was in daily operation. So this summer, Mackinac State Historic Parks is actually reproducing the entire Pratt photo album, I've actually gone through and written up captions and annotations for each one of the images in the album, and that'll actually be for sale at our museum stores and visitor centers if you come to visit us. Uh, it's called Through an Officer's Eyes, the photo album of Edward B. Pratt, U.S. Army, 1873 to 1902. If you're interested in purchasing that album, again, it covers not just Pratt's time at Fort Mackinac, but his entire career at the end of the 19th century in places like Arizona and Texas and Georgia and the Philippines. That book, Through an Officer's Eyes, will be available for sale at our museum stores and visitor centers. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at Fort Mackinac in the 1880s through the eyes of Edward Pratt, and do hope to see you actually visiting the real Fort Mackinac sometime soon. Mm -hmm.